Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at doing some DIY home automation using Telegram Messenger. Telegram is an instant messaging client for a like WhatsApp, but it supports bots, and it's actually a really good way of controlling your project from anywhere in the world for free, and it's quite easy to use too. We'll be using an ESP8266 microcontroller for this project. If you haven't heard of it, it's basically an Arduino compatible board that has built in Wi-Fi and it's only about $3 delivered. One of the best things about this kind of a setup is that everything runs directly on the ESP8266 so you don't need to set up any other software. The project I'll be using to demonstrate this is the lights that I set up in my daughter's room. I wanted a giveaway of me and my wife to be able to control these lights and also to add a couple of smart features such as maybe the lights turn off after 20 minutes automatically. Controlling lights is just one example of something you could do with this project. You could also control basically anything such as a relay, a motor or even display text on a screen, basically anything at all. There's a few advantages to using Telegram over, say, something like a web interface hosted on the ESP8266. One of the main ones for me is that you don't need to worry about the IP address of the device because we won't be using it to access it. We can just go straight to Telegram and that's it. I also like that I don't need to worry about creating a UI for it. The one that comes with Telegram works perfectly fine for what I need it to do. Telegram can be accessed from anywhere where you have an internet connection without having to worry about port forwarding or dynamic DNS. While that's not a big advantage in this LED lights example, it could be useful for other projects. And the last advantage is that you can enable a type of authentication using Telegram's built-in ID system. I'll talk about this later in the video. The main disadvantage is, is that it wouldn't be as fast as a local web interface would be, although it can be made quite fast, and I'll talk about that later. The other disadvantage is if your internet is down or if Telegram has a service outage, it just won't work. First up, let's take a look at the hardware that we'll need for this project. The main thing that we need is an ESP8266 microcontroller. These come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, and the one that I use for this project is an ESP01, which is one of the more basic models, but I definitely recommend using a more development board style one, because they've got a built-in voltage regulator and can be programmed directly from USB, so they're a lot easier to use. To control the LED lights, I'm using a MOSFET in between the ground connection of its power supply and the lights. The MOSFET is also connected to one of the GPIO pins of the ESP8266 and when that pin is high, the MOSFET bridges the connection between the two points and the lights light up. These lights have a standard DC jack at the end of them that plug into their own power supply. So if we add a DC jack to our project and a barrel jack coming out of our project, we can connect in between these lights without needing to cut any wires. If you're interested in trying this setup out but you don't have a particular project in mind, just keep it really simple and use the built-in LED of the ESP8266. Next you're going to need to set up Telegram. It's been years since I set up my account so I can't really remember the process for it, but I'm pretty sure you need to start by installing the phone app because it requires a phone number for authorization. Once you have your account set up, you can download a desktop and web client if you want, and they work independently of the app. Next we need to create a bot that will run on the ESP8266. This is what we'll interact with to send the commands to the lights. Search for a user called botfodder and type in the new bot command. The next thing we need is the username of the bot. This can be anything you want. After that we need the bot ID, this is almost like the address of the bot. This can't have spaces, it has to be unique, and it must end in bot. The bot folder will then return your bot token, which we'll need in our Arduino sketch, and also a link to the bot. Next we'll take a look at the software setup. We need to set up the Arduino IDE with the ESP8266 libraries. I have a full video on this that'll cover everything you need to get started. Once you've that set up, you can download the example sketch from the lights from my GitHub. The next thing we need to do is install the libraries that we need for our sketch. So in the Arduino IDE, go to the Sketch menu, Include Library, and then Manage Libraries. 
search for Telegram and install the Universal Telegram bot by Brian Locke or me. The next thing we need to install is the Arduino JSON library, so just search for JSON. Make sure you install version 5.13 because v6 is in beta at the moment and it doesn't work with the Telegram library. Inside the sketch, all we need to update is the SSID and password for your Wi-Fi and also add the Telegram bot token that we got from the bot fodder. If you're using a different pin than pin 2 or D4 for a Wemo, so you're going to need to change that as well. And finally, if you're running something older than ESP8266 2.5, you'll have to comment out client.set insecure. Once you've that done, you're now ready to upload it to the board, but let's take a look at some parts of this works. The first thing to look at is the get updates method that comes with the library. When you send a message to a bot on Telegram, it sits on Telegram servers until somebody makes a request looking for that bot's messages, and this is authenticated using the bot token. Get updates will return one if there's a new message for you to deal with. Next, we'll take a look at the handle new messages method that comes as part of this example sketch. This method will process the messages that are received by the bot. First it checks is the message of type callback query and if it is it'll process that. We'll come back to this in a second. If it's not of type callback query it's just a regular message and we're checking to see do we have a match on the text that's sent in. A user has to specifically click a start command when they're talking with a bot for the first time so this is a good place where you can send back a message with the capabilities of your bot. Bot.sendMessage sends messages from your bot. For the chat ID, we're using the ID of the person who sent us the message. Here is the body of the message, and we're setting the parse mode to be markdown. If the user sends us the slash options message, we reply with what's called an inline keyboard, and this is what gives all the buttons and options here. The layout of the buttons are dictated by this JSON string, so basically the entire thing is an array of arrays. So the subarrays are the columns and then the outer array is the amount of rows that there are. In this example, the main array has two subarrays. The first one has two elements in it and the second one has three elements. So this will reflect as two buttons on the top row and three buttons on the bottom row. The elements themselves have two properties. Text is the message that will be displayed on the button in the UI and callback data is the message that will get sent back to the bot when the user clicks on it. We then call bot.sendMessage with inline keyboard which is basically the exact same as send message except we're passing in the keyboard string at the end as a for parameter. So now we'll go back and look at what happens when the message is of callback query. So when we get in here, it means that the user has clicked one of our buttons from our inline keyboard. The callback data that we set on our buttons earlier will come back in the text field of the message object. We can then check this and perform actions if it matches specific commands. On and off, it's looking for exact matches and it turns on and off the LEDs based on that. But for time, it checks does the text start with time. If it does, it strips it out and then converts whatever is left into a number and uses that to calculate a timeout for when the LEDs should turn off. One feature that the library supports that can really improve performance in certain scenarios is called long pole. Setting a long pole tells Telegram to not respond to the get updates request for a certain amount of time unless you have a new message. This will hugely reduce the amount of requests you need to make to Telegram because you don't need to ping just to find out that there's no message there for you. And also, when a message does come in, you're likely to have a connection already open so it can respond immediately. Using Longpole doesn't suit all projects because it completely blocks up your loop, but for a project like this where the interaction is driven by the user from Telegram, it's perfect. Another thing that's worth talking about is the security aspect of your bot. The way the bot is at the moment, anybody who finds the bot can interact with it, and obscurity is definitely not security. 
If you open up a conversation with my ID bot and send the get ID command, it will respond with your Telegram ID. You can use this ID in your sketch. When the bot receives a message, you can check is the chat ID this one, and if it is, you can respond to the message, and if not, you can either respond saying unauthorized, or you're probably better off just not responding at all. And that's it for using Telegram to set up some DIY home automation on your ESP8266. There's a lot of features of this library that I haven't even touched on in this video, so make sure to check out the examples that come with the library, there's a lot of them, and also there's some good information on the readme of the GitHub page. If you have any more questions, you can always ask in the comments below, or join the Universal Telegram Bot Library group on Telegram. We've just passed 400 members. Hopefully you found this video interesting, and as always, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below, and if not, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.